Hi, in this video we're going to talk about Ticketmaster and how they managed to digest an entire stadium's worth of ticket sales in a matter of seconds. So as you might know, Ticketmaster sells concert tickets for major shows and events. On their more popular events, they may sell out an entire stadium's worth of tickets in a matter of seconds. When their technology works, we hold our noses and we pay them their monopolistic fees. When something goes wrong, like for instance, not processing over 2 million Taylor Swift tickets, the fans get really angry. And she was certainly not taking any of the blame. The problem, it's me. Even Congress gets involved. Not so in truth, there's no other choice. And that's what's going on. There is a monopoly. As a matter of fact, she said, it's really difficult for me to trust an outside entity with these relationships. So that sounds to me like a warning shot. Now, they tried to sell tickets and had three and a half billion requests come in in a matter of one day. So, needless to say, their systems were not designed to carry this kind of traffic. But the question is, how does Ticketmaster or people like them handle large demand surges? And so, this is a technology channel, not a lawyer channel, so let's talk about some of the things that they've done. So some time ago, I went to visit a Ticketmaster event here in Phoenix, Arizona at, at a meetup. And we learned a, at the meeting about their technology and what they do to make their company work. And so they shared with us some of the things that I thought were interesting. One of the first technologies that comes to mind in their system is Kafka. So what is Kafka? It is an open source project that allows companies to have high volume data streams. So Kafka is not a proprietary solution for Ticketmaster. Any company can pick it up and use it to the same extent that Ticketmaster does. So here's the general strategy of what a Kafka system looks like. It is a consumer and a producer problem. In computer science, we would know this as a queue. And so we would have tickets coming in from the producer and the consumer is the ability for a database to absorb and register a ticket sale, for example. And so since there could be such a large flood of things coming in, the queue or the broker in between has to have enough space to handle the backlog. Now, usually there are multiple types of queues going on and they call them topics in the Kafka terminology. And so topic one, two, or three might be different products or different events that are going on in your application. And so Kafka is one of their secret weapons, you might say, in their technology. The other technology that Ticketmaster and other companies would employ is Redis. So what is Redis for? So on their website, you can see the use cases. They advertise Redis as a data storage. And the key term here is it's not just an ordinary database. It's an in-memory database. And of course, the difference of speed between storing items on a hard disk and keeping it in memory is a, a immense difference. And so storing an entire database in memory, of course, requires a lot of memory, but makes it extremely fast. So usually there's a certain amount of memory cache that Redis would consume. And of course, it's not necessarily the entire database. So what happens is a client does a request and Redis, first of all, checks to see if they've already handled that request recently. And if they have, they can return a result. If the request is not in the cache, then it goes to the standard database, like a SQL server, and then it is put into the cache. So Redis is an in-memory database, but it's really just a caching system to speed up your SID. So between Kafka and Redis, they're supposed to be able to handle large amounts of data, which works for most of the time until somebody like Taylor Swift comes by. If you'd like to learn how to develop full stack applications using popular programming languages, uh, follow the tutorial that I'll leave here. My students become successful software engineers, and I'm sure you will too. So thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you in the next video.